Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, cardaholics of all ages, welcome back to Big Al's Cards. Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, I wanted to continue my series on talking cards, and I wanted to tackle a subject that isn't really super controversial, but I just wanted to share my thoughts on how this person has really helped our hobby, and that is uh, Phil Hughes over at Phil's Pulse. So for those who don't know, Phil, Phil Hughes played in the major leagues uh, he was drafted in 04, played in 07, finished up in 2018. And he played for the Yankees, the Twins, and the Padres. And as a young Yankee fan, uh, you can bet you're behind that when I was younger, I was trading for buying anything and everything Phil that I possibly could. I actually still have a really pretty sizable collection of Phil cards uh, in my PC and I'm sure I'll make a video at some point detailing those, but uh, it was, it's, it's funny, I was actually flying to South Carolina in December of 2019, and I was looking for something to do in the airport, and I hop on YouTube, and I was at that point pretty, pretty strong into cards, I wasn't going as strong as I probably am now, and I looked up Phil's pulls, I, I, it was popped out of my suggested videos, because I was watching Houdini and a bunch of other breakers, and I found Phil. And I said, Phil's Pulls. And I'm like, oh, this seems like an interesting guy. I'm like, wow, Phil has a deep voice. And then I click the channel info. I'm like, oh, wait, that's that's Phil Hughes. Like, former Yankee Phil Hughes. The guy that I collected, Phil Hughes. That's awesome. So from that point on, I became a subscriber. And really, ever since then, I think I've seen every video that Phil put out. And the reason I wanted to talk about this today is because I think that Phil is incredibly good for our hobby and I'll, I'll tell you why one is i think his channels his channel gives me a chance to watch high-end product or large amounts of product be open at one time without having to pay for it now I, I, you can't replace buying product yourself like you really can't obviously if i if, if i had the money to go buy a prism hobby box, I would do it, but I don't. So Phil kind of gives me a chance to look at the product, see what it's like, and make the decision if I wanted to buy single cards or if I ever save up enough money, sell cards to get it. And um, I really appreciate that part of his channel. You know, everyday collectors like myself, we're probably not gonna ever have a chance to buy a ton of high-end product. Tops Luminaries and Tops Dynasty are products that I just don't think I'm ever gonna purchase. Maybe a single card, if I ever have the cash, but even then it's just not a product that I don't think I would ever open. But being able to watch people like Phil do that has been really exciting for me to be able to sit back and say, okay, this is what this product is like. Like I don't get to experience it for myself, but I kind of experience it vicariously through Phil. Um, I thought that was, I, I just think that's really awesome that we kind of get a chance to do that. Um, the other thing that I find interesting is that Phil kind of revitalized interest in a product that nobody ever really purchased and that was 2020 archives archives is not the most desirable product as far as like resale value goes um i like it because i like the older designs i like the older feels and i like pulling cards of guys i used to watch when i was a kid you know a placido polanco autograph was really cool when i pulled that out of a fat pack because i watched placido growing up like I hated him because he always just seemed to, you know, get in the way of the team I was rooting for because he was he was he was clutch. He was good. Well, Phil signed for uh, archives. I actually have one of the copies of that card. Uh, I pulled it out of a fat pack and I was super excited. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's Phil. I was actually opening uh, packs with my mom and I pulled it. I'm like, mom, it's Phil, and she knew who Phil was. She was like, oh my gosh, you got Phil. That's awesome. Phil, when he signed, he posted a video of um, himself signing these cards, and he said, if you find any card that's numbered one of whatever, so one out of 150, one out of 25, whatever, he'll send you a care package. And then if you found the one of one, then he would send you a case. And I bought more archives, I think, this year than I ever have previously, because I was really excited about the prospect of both pulling an autograph of Phil. I mean, I got plenty, but I wanted this one because I love the 2002 design and I wanted to get a current card of Phil. And it also really, you know, I bought more because I wanted to chase it. I wanted to try to get 
a numbered fill. I wanted to try to get the one of whatever, the one of one especially. And I, I thought that was really cool that he was able to revitalize interest in a product that nobody ever really purchased that much before. I mean, if you're going for all the rookies, of course you're gonna buy it because you wanna get the Boba Shett rookie, you wanna get the Jordan Alvarez rookie. But otherwise, it was a product that I would typically see on shelves before all the pandemic stuff happened. So I thought it was really neat that he was able to revitalize that set. I mean, will it continue in 2021? Who knows, probably not, unless he signs for it again. But I thought it was really cool that Phil was able to do that. And again, going back to my earlier point, Phil is a chill dude. I mean, I've, I've dealt with him before. I've messaged him a couple times. Uh, super nice guy. Um, he doesn't let the fame go to his head. He's a really good guy. And I bought some cards from him. He throws in extras. Like, he, he always just comes across as incredibly generous in, in his dealings with people. That's something that I appreciate. And again, it's, it's really neat to be able to watch, A, one of my former favorite players from growing up open cards and be engaged in the hobby. But his videos have also inspired people who were in the hobby at one point to get back in the hobby. And I think that that is probably the best thing that his channel has done. Um, you know, I wasn't, I, I was into the hobby, but like when I found Phil, I kind of really, really got into it. Like more than I was, like I'd go to the store, I'd buy packs, I'd buy boxes. Like I would, I would do that. But then I was like, oh, I need to get a hobby box. I need to buy this product. Like Bowman's best 2019, I'll do it, I'll buy it. So I, I, I've seen constant posts on like, hey, Phil, you've, uh, you've, you've rekindled my interest in collecting. And it's from people who are actually collecting I don't think Phil has inf has inspired the flippers in any way. Otherwise, it'd be Phil's flips, which is not a thing. It's Phil's pulls. He collects things. Yes, he does have a lot of cars that he purchases that are valuable because in the future, he can see how much they're selling for then and he can sell them and get more money. You know, he's inspired a lot of people to get back into collecting and really enjoying the wax busting aspect of collecting that you know, people grew up with, you know, there was the junk, the junk wax era, a lot of people stopped collecting and then they started getting into it again a couple years ago. Then they really jumped into it. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. Phil kind of got me back into Pokemon. I didn't collect Pokemon cards for years and seeing Phil talk about his vintage sets and the cards that he's kind of looking for. Like, it was like, okay, I'll give it a shot. First pack, I get the Pikachu VMAX, the rainbow one. And I thought that was just really cool. You know, Again, this this video is not trying to blow smoke uh, up Phil's behind, so to speak. It's not even meant to be like a brown nosing or like a tribute kind of thing. But I think that Phil gets some flack from people because he did have a lucrative career. He did make a lot of money. And so everyone's like, well, you're rich. You can afford whatever product you want. Okay, that's that's fine. Phil's pulls, the channel, is about showing us the product that is out there so that people, if they decide to buy it, can make an informed decision. You know, I wasn't super into Gypsy Queen in 2020 until I saw a couple of videos detailing how Gypsy Queen was. And then I go buy a blaster box, boom, Luis Robert autograph. You know, like that's that's what the purpose of these channels are for. It's to highlight what you're collecting. It's to make help people make an informed decision about the product. I wish I'd bought or watched more videos on NFL Playbook before I bought it. I didn't really care much for that product and I should have watched more. You know, that, that, that's, the, that's the neat thing about these channels is that people can watch and make informed decisions on if they want to purchase them or not. So I, I think that's really cool that Phil has both inspired a, a ton of collectors, has gotten people back in the actual hobby aspect of things, while also, you know, not letting that go to his head. He maintains humility. He's a good dude. And so I kind of just wanted to be like, hey, Phil is good for this hobby. I know some people may not like Phil that much. That's fine. You know, to each their own. I like Phil. Phil's been nothing but nice to me. And I think that the way that he goes about things is very good for this hobby. I mean, look at, look at how he helped out Houdini. Houdini exploded into the breaker scene. I mean, he's been around for 10 years, but it really wasn't up until a couple of years ago that he really, really took off. I'd watch the streams every night. I'd watch the highlights later on in the day. So I feel like that really came about through Phil. Like Phil, I think, has really helped revitalize the hobby aspect of card collecting. And for that, I thank him. I mean, I don't, uh, 
again, I'm not trying to speak for everybody else, but I think Phil has done good things for this hobby. I think that he's helped out. Is the hobby in a perfect state? No, and I think Phil will be the first person to admit that. But I think he's really been a help to our hobby, helping it grow, helping people come in and really enjoy the collecting, which is what this hobby is all about. So just wanted to share my thoughts on that. I really appreciate you guys listening. Thank you so much. Um, please leave a like, subscribe, comment. Let's have a discussion about it. Uh, talking cards is something that I want to continue to do. Uh, I might do some YouTuber highlights like I did with, with Phil today, um, like I did the other day with Vegas Dave. I may do some talks about flippers and how to fight them and how to tackle retail and things like that. So stay tuned. I, I really appreciate all of you. Thanks so much for watching and for listening and for hanging in there. And until next time, stay safe and bye-bye.